Still not cosmoline or whatever. Okay. And that. And we need a fork. And then you'll have to re tap these maybe to. Yeah, we'll refit them. And what we've got to do now is pull the main shaft out. But before we do that, we want to take the take up lever out of place. Out the snap ring or the uh, E clip here up there. Okay, that's the articulating okay. link. <clears throat> Part of the articulating link. And then we have this guy. We're going to take the pitman out. This is called a pitman or counterweight here. And it comes out here. So we're going to, I might be able to get it through here. Yes, I can. Okay. So we're going to take that loose. But before we do that, we're going to go to that over there. See, this thing is jammed here. See that? It's not, see what I'm saying? It's not free. Mm -hmm. So we're going to go down to this screw. We'll remove that one. Okay, here we go. That one has to come up a little bit like that. Then you have another one here. Loosen that one. Now, this whole guy should be able to come out here. We'll have to take it out with that knuckle. Because this is just sticking here. I think we can do it. Let me get these pliers. I don't like to use pliers on this kind of thing. I've got to invent something else. My son is a youngest boy. I have two boys that work in Caterpillar. The oldest is an engineer in Peoria, Illinois. And uh, he also has an MBA, mechanical engineer. And he is uh, about as far as he can go, which is called engineering steward. There we go. And, uh, How they got thread in there is amazing to me. <laughs> so that's free, and now that's free. But in here, you can see how this is built with needle bearings. Wow. So we're going to lubricate those bearings a little later with uh, Kluber. And we're going to plug a couple of holes here. We're going to do that right now. <clears throat> we'll knock these things in. A little punch over here. Okay. <clears throat> now we're going to tap this out and put two five millimeter screws in it. How many children do you have? Two. Two daughters. Two daughters. And How old two. are they? Let's see. 38 and 33. I put these screws in, they won't ever come out. Is that Loctite of some kind? No, this is something different. But it's a friend of mine. I don't know. Are you a, do you have any firearms? Or you, did you believe? I have a, I have a 12 gauge shotgun. Okay. Well, this friend of mine builds all of the Browning Buckmark guns. And then all the Browning Buckmarks, they're, hand, they're 22 guns, 22 and a 38. Uh, they're made in, set in Salt Lake. Well, fittingly, because Jonathan Browning was a Mormon pioneer, and uh, he set up a business. And so that's, that's where they've been ever since. But anyway, Mountain Green, which is north of us here. Um, so anyway, uh, <clears throat> he gave me this. He says, he says, this is a special stuff for screws. They don't want, and when they build things, they have a screw that's a blind screw. They don't want it, and it's cosmetic, so it has a nice finish on the outside. They don't want it coming out. 
This is how they go, and he says you can't get it out once they're in. That's the end of it. Is it is it a um, is it is it an anaerobic adhesive, like in the absence of it air? Is, it is, but it's also a it's a uh, uh, it is not affected by heat after the fact. Oh. So they need important so you, with it done. Well, yeah. With a number of things, yeah. Some kinds of things like that. Yes, that's true. So some of the Loctites, you can you can you can heat them up, and then they get soft, and you can get yeah, them. Yeah, that's how you get those out. Well, you have a pretty clean uh, workshop at work, don't you? Um, it's it's comparable to this. I mean, it's a workshop. Um, so we have clean area and dirty area, and um, often, and often I'll work in conservation. So I'll keep the artwork up in conservation, and then I'll I work off the patterns. Um, and so I'll go do the dirty work away from the artwork. Oh, sorry. That is not helping me much. Sorry. If you use it there, though. in. Okay, and this other one. Yeah, I'll we'll get that one. Now, see if we can just turn it in like that. How long is the set time? Long enough. <laughs> get it halfway in. Yeah, it's not a good idea to, to uh, have it set up halfway in there. Well, it's just cosmetic, and it'll be just a little hump in there. And that's the lacquer thinner again. Yeah. And uh, it cuts this stuff way fast here. Now the um, the the finish on this is a powder coat uh, baked yes. on. Yeah, it's very good. So the so the lacquer thinner doesn't really touch it. It would if it sat on there a long time. For a while, yeah. But, but like this, you can clean off things. And so we're gonna now we're gonna pull the main shaft out. Now what I'm gonna do is find the find the main screw right there. Screw is conical. Mm -hmm. Now, the challenge here is going to be able, you're going to be getting these parts back out of the machine because we've got some real tightness in there. And, uh, From the varnish. Well, screw damage here. Screw damage, oh. So we're going to have to use these uh, little tools that I have here, like this one. Uh, it's going to be a six millimeter roll. This one, uh, this bar has a just a standard six millimeter ISO, but then this is the fine thread that they use on some things like this guy. But right here we can put this. Uh, see, that's a, oh, that's five millimeter thread. And this is a uh, tool you've made yourself. Oh yeah. Um, what kind of uh, metal? Alloy? This is a needle bar. And I just silver solder the the uh, I take a screw and then silver solder the screw ends in. That's it. Okay. And I can all. do that. <laughs> yeah. Silver soldering is our main. Um, I can give you some screws. Our main. Um, one of the main ways of making mounts is uh, 
primarily, the, the, as far as, we're, we're a number of traits put together, but jeweler would be probably the, well, first you're an art handler, and you have to under, you have to understand all the kinds of different art your work you're handling and being able to do it without damaging it. Yeah. And then you learn that, and that's, that's your whole career. And you work with conservation, and they, 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 they tell you what you, can, what you can and can't do, how you can grab things, and so on. And, um, and then the other trade is a jeweler, and then welder fabricator and blacksmith and <clears throat> a little bit of machining and, you know, just kind of, we're kind of jack of all trades, but the trade is called mount maker. But, but, but I mean, in that, I, you know, I, I can sure see it. And uh, how long have you worked there? Um, 15, 16 years. Wow. You have a mentor there? No, um, I, I did not. I was not fortunate enough to have one. I had to kind of learn it. Um, I work for a fairly wealthy museum, so I asked if I could go. When, I, when, I, when they first hired me, I said, well, can you send me to the Met for a week? Yeah. And they did, and I went to the Met, and a very generous woman there, the chief mount maker there, um, took me around and showed me mounts. And you, know, and you uh, see, you learn that. I mean, I went to Link, Lincoln Welding School for TIG welding. I, you know, you learn jewelry from jewelry making. And so you can, you know, machining by, you know, so on. And, and so you learn these various sub skills that you need and then you combine it all into the mount making yeah um, but you certainly would have been exceptionally good at it um, uh, you know prototype machinists I would say in general would probably be very good at it um, often uh, jewelers enter the field sculptors enter it um, you know it's often people who went to art school but in more of the the technical you know, craft aspects yeah. of it metal metal working are often the mount, become mount makers what are the most famous uh artworks that you actually handled oh i mean you can i mean well paintings are probably the we, we have we have one of the three water lilies from monet and i made the mount for that um that's probably you'd know that one um many picasso i mean if you if you name the artist i probably handled something from them um just handling those things to me would be a it, 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 it give me the, give me the, the, the tickles, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It it, 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 it never gets old. It doesn't. Yeah. And and you're and it's humbling. Um, if you ever think you're good at something, um, right there in front of you is somebody who was better. Um, and they could have been five thousand years ago. Um, so we, amazing artwork that's several thousand. We, we you know it's it's made by anonymous. We don't know who made it. Um, but you know it lost to history. Uh, but but amazing. You know, I was in high school. I hated history, and I was determined. I didn't like my teacher, and I was a, a punk kid. <laughs> so what you've been doing here is you've been um, you've been um, putting the uh, paying my dues. <laughs> you, you've been you've been putting the uh, the the lacquer thinner in there, yeah. and then just working things back and forth until they're well, right here. We've got a lot of oil varnish underneath some of this yeah. stuff, so. Yeah, that's what I'm doing here. And uh, and that special tool allowed you to get over that burr that somebody put on that shaft. Well, what it does is it gives me a grip on the tool so I can put in the hole, I can put uh, um, a uh, uh, lacquer thinner, and then with it there, I put the tool back in, simply work it back and forth until finally yep. it goes free. Yep. And uh, this lacquer thinner, it will cut almost anything. By the way, can knock all those acorns off our trees, and my wife will be having a fit with that. These trees are really beautiful in the summer. They're greener. Right? We've had a really pretty, uh, I would say, real dry. Uh, Something there. And sometimes, like I'm right now, I can easily get these parts, and they're not so tight that I can just put a screwdriver in the whole one. Does it ever uh, pay to like soak them and kind of walk away and do something else and no, come back again? Well, evaporation, you know, so it evaporates so fast. Then well. I see. Okay, so what we're going to do now. <coughs> gonna hold the pitman. I do not want to pound on the bearing, <clears throat> but if I knock the bearing <clears throat> knock the bearing too far in, I can always use a <clears throat> I can move it back to the right location with the depth gauge. 
<clears throat> I don't even know what that's supposed to be. So, but you try to avoid that. Yeah. Make extra work. <clears throat> <Just> extra work. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> and let's go back in here. We're gonna look. We're gonna add. Uh, you can, if you want to post some of this too, you're welcome to do that. I, I will. I will. Um, I will edit it down, and I will uh, let you. Um, um, f feel comfortable with whatever I do first, um, and you know we'll let it out in your pri <coughs> private conversations. And uh, it's going to be a little bit shaky, Cam. <laughs> but but you know unless we wanted to spend three days doing this, what are you going to do, right? Uh, but yeah, I will I will let you uh, I will let you have uh, okay. And and if you and if it's something you want to put on uh, on your um, <coughs> NIT site, that's fine too because it really is your intellectual property one of the reasons I wear blue gloves too is because you know you have, your the solvents are really terrible on your hands uh, pre-war uh, like, uh, our house is like nine, right before the depression about 1929 oh yeah you refitted an older home? Um, some of it. We're kind of in never-ending process. Our um, Ruth's mother lives with, with us, so we had a... Um, an addition put on for her. I'm going to hang on, uh, Ruth? Yes. I'm going to hold this hand, deal. Yes. Thank you. Just Yep, yeah, because I'm going to... It's going to try to go in. Right, not this. Knocking all the parts off the shaft. Okay, pull this out. A little bit here. Pull it. We can move it back and forth. See what we've got here. Okay. 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 And they got thread around wrapped around that as well. Use a six Out of work getting all that thread off those bobbins. I had to cut it off. Yep. And they were good Bernina bobbins. I wasn't going to throw them away. There it goes. I have all older parts for the machine, it's not a problem. You'd have to okay. send it unless you're coming out this way. Okay. So if I send it to you, there's an address on your website, 127 East Peachtree Drive. That's correct. That's, okay. That's the one to so, use. Okay, so I can just mail it to you. And then you mail it back. Yes, it's, that's correct. Keep in mind you have to have two inches of packaging all the way around the machine. Tight packaging. Okay. And uh, uh, what I would do is buy a box that's you, size about the size you need for that. And then I would, uh -huh. I would use the construction foam you can buy like at Home Depot. Okay. And, uh, and uh, fit the box with two inches of that all the way around the inside. Put the machine in it. Put a bag over the machine like a tray. 
they should be more centered here. So it looks like they, they were off, off to one side on that like that. Now on this main shaft, just to show you this, um, you where the screw's been tightened really tight, I'm trying to get that out, it's been difficult. You can see what they've done, they've done is they've uh, undercut this and then they've sprayed, spray arced molybdenum on for the bearing surfaces here and here. They being Bernina when it was manufactured? Or? Yeah, yeah. As a matter of fact, I've never trained anybody. And no one's ever seen this before, just with that way. I have an abundance of shafts, so I can do this to you for a really cheap price here. This is from April. Anyway, a virgin shaft. Bones. I was on the right And what are you lubricating this with? This is going to be lubricated with Kluber. And that's what's in that? Kluber 68. So here, let's get all these out and we'll clean them up. Put screws back in them. when we have this out now we're going to put the pitman on and go back to this end but here we've knocked that bearing back substantially we'll measure it and see what we're at where we're at Let's get that thrust washer out of there and let's clean it up and uh, then we'll be ready to go ahead and put these back together and this guy this lifting ring we're going to take out and and get the bearing out of it. Okay. So that's the lifting ring on the machine. And this is the this guy it looks to me good shape. There's a washer in place there. Don't want to lose that. Pull that washer out there. That is a that yeah, should be a wave washer. All right. <clears throat> All right. So right now we're going to wash this out. Let's take this back out. This is the last part that's in there, I believe. No parts in there. Okay. Now yeah, let's get another tray. And this is the lacquer thinner again? Yep. It's all metal. Mm -hmm. Now, Jeremy's machine, you completely stripped it down 
and did a complete repaint and everything on it, right? Every to every single detail. I didn't spare any anything on that. Every screw that was damaged was replaced. Um, I made improvements on the hook. I did a lot of things on that machine, though that his machine was just oh sorry, beautiful. just a beautiful thing. Yeah, he uh, he told me that that it was completely worn out when he sent it to you. Well. Thing is, is somebody painted it over and oh. tried to make him think it was a new 217. Oh. And he spent a lot of money on it. And it was a terrible thing because uh, it wasn't new and um, it was a scam. Well, it was. It wasn't working on <laughs> things. Uh -huh. He was the nicest fellow. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's basically all I want to do is clean that out a bit. He's very helpful with advice of uh, giving people, uh, yeah, uh, you know, kind of. Well, he's very gifted, you know. And look at what he's done. Yeah. On the quilting side, it's pretty amazing. Yeah. And uh, you know, I've had a lot of quilt artisans like Carol Fowler, and uh, she was the last big, the last, uh, and I finished her machine in May. That was expensive. And well, it wasn't really expensive. It was about three. Thousand something. It wasn't quite that much anyway. I and, placed a lot of parts on it. And that's for the uh, that's the legacy. Yeah. Um, now, what 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 are you using to clean right now? Mineral spirits. Mineral spirits. Okay. Yeah, I just use the lacquer thinner. They don't mix. I use the lacquer thinner to loosen things up, and then I use and I stir it around, just break the surface with a brush, and then I'll use a. Uh, uh, this stuff because it's cheaper. Mm -hmm. Although one thing disappointing about it is that it doesn't evaporate as fast as I would like. Is that a nylon brush you're using? Just like regular? Yeah. Like a heavy toothbrush, basically. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Put this one back again. Yeah, this iron is really contagious stuff. It's like a very <laughs> fine powder. Yeah. There we go. Look at all this <laughs> damage here. What in the world was somebody doing? I think they weren't paying attention. No, I mean, they've damaged it. They've, it's like they reamed it with something. No, they... Oh, you mean all the scratching? Yeah, that's actually hammer marks. It's uh, no, hammer they marks. They the were crack. trying to get the bearing out. It looks like it cracked it here. They've cracked this thing. Here? Yep. You've seen all kinds of crazy things on these things. It's like they were driving a cold chisel in between it. Yeah. Little did they realize that, let's get rid of this now, that inside the machine is a screw that holds the bearing in place. And you are going to get it out that way. 